it's uh, another problem that comes up with uh, Trinity is, uh, you know, it's a polytheistic belief. No matter how much you try to explain that these three things are one in purpose, uh, for example, we could have three gods that are still one in purpose and uh, that would still make them three gods. So there's nothing you can say about the Trinity, about these three persons, as they call them in Christianity, that would, you know, uh, not work for three gods either. So however much you try to walk around it, it's polytheism. And that's uh, where the problem is. You cannot, you cannot have three things that, you know, that's a question that Christians ask themselves. Like if we would have one of them, is each one of them a third of the Godhead or is each one of them a God on its, uh, on its own? And that's where the polythe polytheistic, uh, you know, belief cannot be, you know, uh, escaped they'll end up in, in, in polytheism either way. So that's that's the problem. With but again, let me start off and say that I beg to differ with Abdul Rahman uh, that when we look at the insistence of his understanding of God, that this is explicitly polytheistic. Uh, when we look at the doctrine of the Trinity, um, we as Christians believe that it does not contradict monotheism. In fact, the doctrine of the Trinity, by its very self-definition, asserts that there is only one God. That's the very beginning premise that we start off with. So the doctrine of the Trinity does not teach that there are three gods, but rather one God who exists in three persons. Um, and it is explicitly uh, and strictly monotheistic. Um, okay, so is the Trinity pagan? Um, some faulty definitions are grounded. Uh, obviously in misunderstandings such as uh, the Muslim view that Christians are polytheists for worshipping God, Jesus and Mary as I've just shown recently in the previous clip. Uh, but we can see quite clearly that this is not what the biblical scriptures teach nor is that what the Quran teach. Uh, in actual fact the Quran confuses it completely. So we can briefly explore some of the flawed depictions of the Trinity that might give us some understanding as to we can confuse this doctrine. So, first of all, uh, when we look at the doctrine of the Trinity, we need to say it is important to keep in mind that the Bible reveals one true and living God who exists in three distinct but inseparable co-eternal, co-substantial persons, uh, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So, uh, again, uh, one of the notions that we should look out for is tritheism. Uh, tritheism teaches that the, the God essentially consists of three separate gods. Uh, while it is accurate to say that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is, is God, um, it would be wrong from a Christian perspective to say that these three persons constitute three separate deities. That's not what Christians believe. Uh, another perspective that has also crept into the church very early on into Christianity uh, is a perspective called Arianism. Uh, but today, I, I would rather say that another perspective that is emerging is the perspective called Unitarianism. Uh, now, Unitarians are usually Sassinians, and Unitarianism essentially maintains that God is only one divine person, which is usually the Father. They deny Jesus Christ to be God in that very same sense. And historically, when we look at uh, the understanding of Sassinians, um, it is a form of non-Trinitarianism that emerged around the time of, uh, again, of the Protestant Reformation. Uh, and there was, again, the essential view uh, that Jesus was merely human. Um, so uh, this is not what Christians believe when they speak about these different perspectives surrounding the Trinity. But there are also different perspectives that you should know about. Uh, another one is called modalism. Uh, it's also a form of Unitarianism. Uh, modalism is the belief that there is one God uh, in substance and person, and that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three successive uh, functional modes of existence, uh, but they're not distinct persons. Um, and again, uh, this is not what Christians believe at all. Uh, there's also another perspective called Sibelianism, um, which is also another way to express the modalistic view of God. Uh, Sibelius was a third century priest, and he argued that God is like an actor uh, who, wearing several masks, uh, 
he's wearing these masks and he's resembling these masks uh, and uh, again uh, you know he shows quite clearly that the father has uh, is displayed in this mask as the father then the mask of the son is put on and the son is displayed in the mask of the son and finally there's the mask of the Holy Spirit um, but behind these three masks are just one person uh, and that's not what Christians believe at all uh, when it comes to this perspective Okay, well, another perspective uh, that is also quite um, daunting to explain is a perspective by the name of Patrick Passionism. Um, and this is um, the seemingly logically consequence of modalism, uh, that there is no real distinction between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Uh, and the Father was the one, in actual fact, that must have suffered on the cross. This is also not what Christians believe. Another perspective is known as one as Pentecostalism. Uh, this is also something that is not really that evident in South Africa, but it's definitely something that is evident in America. So it is a, a modern anti-Trinitarian sect that denies any distinctions amongst the persons of the Godhead. Uh, they will say that Jesus is God, but he's also the Father and the Holy Spirit. So in a slight uh, deviation from ancient modalism, uh, one is Pentecostalism teaches that God is able to manifest himself in all three modes simultaneously, uh, such as G uh, when we look at Jesus in his baptism in Luke chapter 3, 22, it's in actual fact that one person of Christ that manifests himself in all three of these modes. Well, that's not what we believe as biblical Trinitarians as well. Uh, the accusation that was made by Abdul Rahman is that Christianity and in their conception of the triune God is simply polytheistic. Now, let me just explain to you what polytheism is. Polytheism is the belief that there are multiple deities. Uh, followers of Judaism, Islam, and several counterfeit forms of Christianity uh, often accuse Orthodox Christians of being polytheists. Uh, they'll say, then they will is insist upon their own definition and they will say we worship three gods but again they misunderstand the trinitarian understanding of christians and uh, christians insist that there's only one god uh, that exists in a triunity or threeness that is three distinct persons but only one essence or being uh, and other than that we cannot really say anything more so here's another perspective that is also uh, often not mentioned, but the perspective is called henotheism. Um, henotheism is a hybrid between polytheism and monotheism, uh, and uh, henotheists commit themselves in their devotion towards one God amongst many, uh, which means that um, they don't really leave room in their devotion to the other gods, but they only adequately give devotion to one God amongst many. Uh, Perhaps uh, one of the best uh, modern day examples of henotheism uh, comes from uh, the Church of Jesus Christ and the Latter day Saints. Uh, they can be henotheistic in a way uh, where the Church profess a belief in the Trinity, uh, but when they describe the, both the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, they describe them as deities of flesh and bone, with the Holy Spirit as being a personage or, or a spirit. Um, so again, uh, that is not biblical and it's something that we dearly deny and do not believe. So uh, what do we need to believe when it comes to uh, the understanding of the one and the three? Uh, and here I want to read you a short quote from Gregory of Nazianzus uh, in his Orations 40.41, uh, which he preached in Constantinople on January the 6th uh, in 381, a day after my wife's birthday. Uh, on a Domini. And let me read to you what he says about the one and threeness of God. And this is a worthy caution for all Christians. No sooner do I conceive of the one than I am illuminated by the splendor of the three. No sooner do I distinguish them than I am carried back to the one. When I think of the one or of the three, I think of him as part of the whole, and my eyes are filled, and the greater part of what I am thinking of escapes me. I cannot grasp the greatness of that one so as to attribute a greater greatness to the rest. When I contemplate the three together, I see but one torch, and cannot divide or measure out the undivided light. I want to leave you with that as a thought, and I also want to say 
to my friends at Uplift Dawah. Uh, again, when we look at the doctrine of the Trinity, it is worthy to note and to state that we need to describe Christian doctrines in Christian terms. And we should not uh, rather attack uh, as a red herring caricatures of what we've made the doctrine to be. When we do so, it will shed illumination upon our understanding and it will give some sort of proximity as to what we believe and what we say when we speak about this doctrine. I'm going to end it there uh, and let me just also say to you, uh, if you want a good book that uh, describes the roles and the persons, there's a book of Bruce Ware, uh, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Relationship Roles and Relevance. Uh, very good book uh, and we can debate uh, eternal functional subordination later, but uh, this is a very good book in and of itself. Uh, let me also just stop you and say, when you look at our webpage, you'll see we've added a Patreon button. Uh, we will upload some of our um, some of the stuff that I've written, some of the videos that I've made onto the site. But please, uh, please pray about it. And please, if you find it in your heart, even if you can support us with a few dollars every month, uh, it will really help us to produce uh, some more videos. It will help us to uh, get our opinion made known. Uh, and it will also in, uh, enable us to adequately give a description of the ministry that God has given us. Uh, and being good stewards of good biblical theology as well. We want to equip you. We want to love you. We want to give these things to you for free. But please, if you can, um, you know, uh, help us. And please, if you can, uh, can you become a Patreon? And can you become one that can really just contribute and help us to adequately present our ministry? So please go and support us. Please become a Patreon. Uh, leave us a message, even if it's a, a dollar a month. Uh, please do so. Make sure you enter your details upon the site and make sure uh, I'll also put it in the description of all of these videos, but make sure that you that you contribute something towards what we are doing. Uh, it's good to get a thumbs up and please can you give a thumbs up for the videos as well, but please also make sure uh, pray about it and ask God give something so you can help us in our course. Uh, in all that we do for the work of God. This is the ministry of God. Be blessed. Uh, we do not want this to become a beggathon, but we really need your help. Uh, be blessed, and we will speak with you again. And see you soon.